according to WHO, uh, the burden of uh, communicable diseases is enormous. And uh, if you look at uh, demand versus supply, there is a big discrepancy. Above all, actually, in this uh, continent, which predominantly consists of uh, resource limited settings and uh, there is a lot of constraint we work with. Uh, there is a paucity of uh, diagnostic labs and uh, drugs and vaccines. Especially uh, uh, limited resource countries will follow the example. And uh, in fact, actually, we are also planning to go ahead with National Center for Infectious Diseases, which will be, I think, uh, a big milestone uh, in its own perspective. There could be two streams which actually we have planned at present. Uh, one is actually post MD, the other one is post MBBS. Yes, students will be uh, sent to uh, centers uh, which have state of the art facilities in India. Uh, there are, I can give you example like uh, National Institute of Virology, Pune, and uh, some other state of the art facilities uh, uh, in India. Likewise, uh, in countries uh, which are developed, highly developed, they have well developed health system in place. So, our students uh, will have the option uh, to visit those places uh, to, uh, in order to widen their outlook, uh, how these country, countries uh, deal with uh, these infectious diseases. I think uh, whichever drugs, new drugs are discovered in future, there should be some system of introduction of these drugs into the market that how uh, the drug sale should be regulated or availability should be regulated. There should be uh, ra rationality behind it. Look at the example of Vidaculin, uh, which we fought for last several years. It has been introduced, but it has been introduced through a system that means uh, under conditional access program through RNTCP, that is the Revised National TB Control Program of India. And I feel it will never be available over the counter in the free market. Uh, infectious disease, I think, is a very good initiative taken up by Dr. Sharma in AIMS. It's a new program which has been well established outside India, but starting for the first time started in India. This program gets us training in all departments like pediatrics, radiology, medicine, pharmacology, microbiology. And it helps us collaborate all the subdivisions of infections into medicine and get us specially trained for uh, solving complicated uh, septic patients, ventilator patients, post-transplant infectious patients and various uh, research programs have been initiated for us in uh, diseases and treatments which have not been provided previously. India being one of the most uh, populated and the, the biggest carrier of infectious diseases in, in the whole world probably. This country has been missing the program for infectious diseases. With this new program that uh, has been started up in AIMS, I feel all the mismanaged patients will be managed in a way proper, much proper manner. All the infections that were cured on uh, broad spectrum antibiotics and a cocktail therapy will now be given targeted therapy. I joined this course with a lot of expectations. Actually, I am Basically, my background is MD microbiology. I have been trained in microbiological techniques uh, in diagnosing infectious diseases in bacteriology, mycology, parasitology, virology, etc. and the mo newer molecular techniques. At first, I joined the MD microbiology course because I was mostly interested in infectious diseases. I, I thought that probably the microbiology exposure will give me enough uh, ideas, enough uh, knowledge to deal with the infectious diseases burden, the ID problems of India. But uh, even after the three years of microbiology curriculum, I found that the knowledge, I, I had a knowledge gap. I, I, I needed more exposure in actually treating the infectious disease patients. I belong to Calcutta. And after my MBBS courses, I was exposed to primary care, rural Bengal posting, where I found 
there are untrained medical practitioners without medical degree whom we refer to as quack practitioners prescribing antitubercular drugs for one month for patients with seven days of fever we have medical pharmacy shops which prescribe antibiotics like linezolid or ciprofloxacin or even faropinem for two days three days for some uh, bizarre symptoms like abdominal pain means there are absolutely no guidelines of antibiotic uh, prescription there are no regulations in india we find uh, even physicians in secondary or tertiary care centers teaching uh, treating patients with uh, unstandardized regimen so i felt that even with the knowledge of microbiology uh, i should have an exposure of a kind of mixed exposure interdisciplinary exposure with medicine with icu with pharmacology with radiology and obviously with public health epidemiology so i was searching for a course there was no such alternative available i was practicing infectious disease and microbiology with my background knowledge and uh, i i came across a few courses uh, in southern india in western india which were mostly in large corporate private hospitals those were just six month fellowships but i found that those courses were mostly meant for people who were affording those corporate hospitals and those were mainly dealing with in icu related infections transplant related infections in very high level apex uh, referral centers but i didn't find a course which were de dealing from the uh, from the poorest of the poor patients with multi drug resistant tuberculosis with hiv without social support system up to st the patients with stem cell transplantation or renal transplant or liver transplant so when the course started in aims i found that this is it and i'm 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 now currently posted with the department of medicine i will have an exposure of uh, microbiology pharmacology radiology icu and with the stem cell transplant patients with the renal transplant team with the directly observed tuberculosis treatment uh, center we will have exposure to anti retroviral therapy center we will be exposed to national institute of virology and i feel that uh this is absolutely unique and absolutely uh, the need of the day the need of the hour and uh, i believe uh, i will be happy if i can contribute to the need of infectious disease burden in india after this course actually i would like to say that um, initially during the time of louis pasteur something there was uh, there was an integration of all different different fields of uh, medicine but then with um, advancing science there was disintegration now with disintegration we have uh, super specialities we have all different different departments but this department is a unique department this has called for reintegration of all of these uh, departments being in medicine you can see amazing number of uh, patients being in medicine we deal with infectious disease on a daily basis uh, the patients that we get here are extremely sick and have uh, usually taken treatment from multiple hospitals before being referred here so they get with them a lot of resistant organisms which are not sensitive to the usual antibiotics that we use uh, having an expert opinion in those cases is essential for better management of patients uh, other than that the burden of uh, other chronic infections like tuberculosis hiv etc is also extremely high in our country and being a tertiary referral center and a center of excellence in tuberculosis we get a lot of those cases also uh, we have also recently uh, been actively involved in formulation of the index TB guidelines, which are the first evidence-based guidelines on extrapulmonary tuberculosis. Uh, Dr. Sharma, head of department, was the pioneer. So, as residents also, we had taken active part in the formulation of those guidelines, which are which we are now which we are now started to implement. Uh, critical care is also a very important component of infectious disease, as we get a lot of patients who develop ARDS secondary to uh, viral or bacterial infections. Uh, those patients are frequently put on mechanical ventilation and then are taken care of in the ICU. we also have dr shivdas who has just passed mbbs and have joined in this six years course of uh, dm infectious yeah. disease why have you chosen this uh, infectious disease six years course uh, basically my interest in infectious disease started when i was doing internship in department of community medicine at that time there was a outbreak of fever with rash in a village called kalehol in belgaum 
So during that time, it was very difficult for us to diagnose what is was the cause for fever outbreak. Which state? Karnataka, sir. Karnataka. Karnataka. There were many outbreaks in other parts of Belgium also. So when we did a survey, we were not able to diagnose what was the uh, cause for the fever. And for uh, further epidemiological studies, we were not. We were also not able to know. Uh, what samples we have to send and how we have to send. So at that time, a person from WHO who was SHO in Belgium, he came and he guided us how to proceed with the case. And finally, we uh, came to know that it was a rubella outbreak. But on clinical determination, it was very uh, difficult to diagnose what it was. But after joining uh, the Department of Infectious Diseases, I feel like we will be able to diagnose such infections clinically and then we can uh, uh, plan for what steps to uh, take for the further. Apart from that, now currently there is a problem with antibiotic resistance in most of the infections. So if we know what infection we are actually dealing with, we can uh, then we can definitely treat it with more confidence. Uh, and most of the times the people from uh, people who are having infections, they are they are mainly coming from poor background. They cannot afford all the investigations, which are uh, uh, irrelevantly sent by most of the corporate hospitals. Uh, so I feel like if we are able to diagnose an uh, infection clinically, we can limit the infect, uh, limit these uh, investigations and help manage the patient better. India has a huge burden of infectious diseases, uh, which is a significant cause of morbidity and mortality in our country. And uh, many of our countrymen, both adults and uh, children, are actually dying of uh, various infectious diseases. So uh, this was the vision. So it was about time. It was due. I would rather say overdue that we have some structured program uh, to assess this need of healthcare need of our countrymen. So the, here came the concept of DM program in infectious diseases. So this was drafted with a trinity of mission, patient care, research and teaching. The program also has a very robust uh, public health component. The residents uh, will be uh, posted in ART centers, DOT centers, so they will have, they will be in tune to the national programs uh, in India, as well they will be posted in community medicine. Uh, residents in this program uh, would have a background from uh, MD medicine, MD microbiology or MD pediatrics or MD in tropical medicine. A very comprehensive program has been designed for these residents, uh, which will include posting in um, medical wards, infectious disease wards, pediatrics, microbiology, pharmacology, radiology, and very import importantly, critical care. They will be posted in ICUs. They will learn procedures like bronchoscopy, like pericardiosynthesis. So a very com comprehensive module is already prepared for them. I feel like uh, the addition of the infectious disease department uh, at the All India Institute has really helped the medicine department itself in dealing with some of the difficult cases that have come. You know, this being an apex institution, we get all sorts of weird presentations of rare diseases. Not just rare, but there are atypical presentations as well. So, uh, when, when the uh, medicine department works closely with the infectious disease department, that is when, you know, these cases can be tackled properly. Because uh, the uh, ID people have a background in uh, microbiology as well as uh, clinical training. So, they advise us on uh, how to send cultures and what antibiotics to start with and uh, as a result our success rate in diagnosing these cases and dealing with them successfully uh, has also increased and uh, along with that I would say that uh, our antibiotic practices are also definitely improving suddenly that awareness in India is coming in where uh, you know at uh, apex centers we previously used to have a habit of starting our uh, antibiotic regimes with very uh, strong antibiotics but now with uh, the uh, infectious disease course there's a lot more consciousness uh, with uh, respect to what empirical antibiotics we should start with and how to escalate and all of this is being guided by these people who have specific training in this area and uh, like my colleague said uh, it's interesting because uh, in the infectious disease course combines aspects from different different super specialties reintegrating them for example uh, infective endocarditis from cardiology or pyelonephritis from nephrology. These people will be sought after, uh, you know, for consultations from different types of specialties as medicine diverges more in the future. Furthermore, at least there is the paucity of uh, ID infection diseases uh, experts keeping all these things in mind that uh, there is a huge demand and uh, there are no experts. Uh, even actually, uh, if you look at uh, the practices in India, there is uh, no system actually. Anyone can prescribe any antibiotic 
and uh, sometimes there is no rational drugs are freely av available over the counter which uh, the antibiotics are uh, predominantly misused so keeping everything in uh, mind actually i think uh, system requires uh, uh, streamlining and therefore uh, i felt that there, over the years i have felt that there is a necessity of having infectious diseases experts and this was a, a very small step the initial step and uh, i think in coming years we will be becoming more wise uh, as how to improve this also which we which uh, the course which we have started we will also be gaining experience uh, since we are, ourselves are on the uh, learning curve